in, in other Nick news, how about the potential return of Action Jackson? And Mark Jackson could be, uh, is close to returning to the booth to fill in for Clyde. Clyde's kind of yeah. winding down the schedule. He's close to retirement. Doesn't want to do as many road games. What do you think about Mark Jackson coming back? So initially I heard this rumor, I read this rumor that there was talk of Breen, Van Gundy, and, and Jack Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Is that crazy? Is that still a thing? Well, the latest report, and it was from Andrew Marchand. You had him on your yeah. show. Yeah. He yeah. said Jackson in, Van Gundy not in, which I okay. thought was interesting. No plans because for I, Van Gundy at the moment. Yeah, I thought that uh, the Van Gundy piece was a little far-fetched mm. uh, just because he's been, you know, he's been uh, critical and whatnot, and it, it didn't end so well, but, you know, that was so long ago now. That would have been a dream. I yeah. mean, I, I, I yeah. enjoy them very much as a trio, and, like, man, we get the freaking NBA on ABC slash ESPN A team for the last 16 or so years as our local team. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, the fact that we get Mike Breen, who – is one of the nicest human beings that I've ever had the the, the pleasure of meeting. Um, the fact that we get him on a regular basis as our play-by-play -play guy is just unbelievable. So, yeah. uh, yes, sign me up for that trio. And if not, I'm down with Jackson coming back. Uh, I, I don't mind him at all as an analyst. Uh, I know that he sometimes rubs people the wrong way, but I thought he was fine. Uh, I think Doris Burke is fantastic. I think yeah. JJ Redick is fantastic. I think that um, obviously Breen is great. Uh, I know Knicks fans don't love RJ. I, I, I like him. I think he's fun. Our, Richard Jefferson. Yeah. Like, I think yeah. ESPN is fine. But like that, that was an eight. That, to me, they were an eight. That was an eight team. Were, were you yes. surprised that they disbanded shocked. that group? And shocked. Absolutely shocked. I, I was shocked, shocked too. Good. Shocked more that Van Gundy, I, I, I at some point, you thought maybe like Jackson would go back to coaching or something like that. I know, I think I could, I could tell, like, I know the people that worked on the broadcast all love Van Gundy. You had always heard stuff about um, the NBA, you know, not being happy. With, yeah. That to me, like made him so great. I like you know that. What I mean, like, I felt yes, like he was he speaking for like me. It is. Like coach, yes. you were right on on that point. Yes. He tells it like okay. it is. He's not sugarcoating. He's not talking in hyperbole and nonsense. I mean, I could listen to Mike Breen, all day, every day. He's one of the greatest play-by-play -play men of my lifetime, your lifetime. And him and, and Jeff with that little Knicks connection yeah. you know, deep down. It was just like a dream for us. It was fantastic. And I love Doris. Yeah. I love her. I, she's tremendous. But, uh, yeah, I, I was shocked when, when it's like, you know, to me, like there, 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 are, there are classic duos, uh, you know, like John Madden and Pat Summerall and uh, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman now, et cetera, et cetera. And, like, they were a duo, yeah. not to mention a, a trio, trio. Yeah, and they yeah. just got sort of like unceremoniously disbanded yeah. like that. Kind of a bummer. That, that a bummer. one caught me by surprise, and then I had figured with that move that they were going to boost J.J. Redick all the way up to the front seat, but then they kind of went old guard in a way by bringing in Doc Rivers, who, yes, they say he and Breen have a close relationship, but Doc Rivers, is he's a basketball lifer. He's been in every aspect of the game. You know, Doris yeah. Burke, great work. No no uh, offense to her, but I thought they would have went, like, with fresh voices next to Breen, but they kind of just... I feel... You know, kind of just recycled uh, some names, but I, I thought they, they ruined the chemistry that they had with, uh, with JVG and Mark. And that's the word, chemistry, right? Um, I like the chemistry that Redick, RJ, and Ryan Ruko Ruko. have. Yeah. Um, Ruko's very, very talented. Yeah. But you know when you listen to those guys that Breen, Van Gundy, and and Mark Jackson are friends, right? And uh, I don't I don't know what the status is of their relationship, you know, Breen, Doris, and uh, and Doc Rivers. But yeah. uh, the fir I, I may have mentioned this to you, but like the first game that I ever got to do sidelines, it was Breen and Van Gundy and me. It was in uh, 2019. It was uh, Mavericks yep. at Pelicans. And I couldn't believe that. Like, how the hell? Like, what lottery did I win in life that I get to be the <laughs> sideline guy for Breen and Van Gundy? And we went to dinner the night before. And we went to lunch the day of the game. And all they're doing is, like, cracking jokes on each other and making fun of each other. And even in the text thread about, like, the pickup times, they're cracking jokes. And it's like, man, these guys are, like, legit close friends. And it comes across that way on TV. It was like, yeah. the, 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 it was, it was like the experience of a lifetime to just be a tiny, tiny piece of that broadcast. And uh, it's, it's a bummer that it's ending. So when I started to hear or read that, maybe they would reunite under the MSG network banner. I was like, holy smoke, yeah. we actually get these guys for like 60-something games now? Yeah. But maybe too good to be true.
Who is your? I'm going to ask you this question that that you had asked on on your podcast with uh, with Andrew Marsh and on the Ariel Hawani Basketball Show. Yes, Who's sir. your dream team? Two or three man mm-hmm. broadcast in studio host. Who's your dream team? All right, so this is super tough for me because I'm inclined to go with Marv because he introduced me to basketball. He was the guy in the 90s NBA on NBC, but uh, over time, Mike has become my guy, and I've had a chance to work with him, so I'm very biased towards him, and so I'll go with Mike Breen. As my play-by-play, I do want to also mention Ein Eagle, who mm. I think doesn't get talked about enough, who yeah. I think does a tremendous job, and even his son, No Eagle, has turned into an unbelievable play-by-play mm-hmm. guy at such a young age. So I think it's easy to go, you know, Breen, Van Gundy, like that's the team. I don't think that's fun for these purposes. So I'm going to actually go Breen and then give a shout-out to a guy from my youth. So I can't go with Marv because I'm going with Breen, but I'm going to go with the Czar of the Telestrator, mm-hmm. with Mike Fratello. Okay. I love right. Fratello yeah. and uh, Marv. I love their relationship, cracking jokes. And, yeah. and Breen has a similar you know, sense of humor. So I think that would be fun. And then finally, it, it feels too Nick-centric if I then go Breen, Czar, and a Johnny Hoops, I who I love. Johnny Hoops. Yeah. I love Johnny Hoops. Yeah. Do I go with like a Bill Raftery? You know, I love classic. Raft. Yeah, Ra- I love his energy. Yeah, I yeah. love his. Ex- Is it also bad that there are no actual players in that mix? Not necessarily. Mm. I'll go with. Screw. I'm gonna go with Johnny Hoops. Shout out to Johnny yeah. Hoops, the legend. I go with Johnny. Johnny Hoops. Back in the day, when I got a satellite dish in uh, in '97 for that '97 '96 '97 season, I got it midway through that season, getting that MSG um, network broadcast for the first time you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah. and it's johnny hoops and marv i was like this is freaking amazing and watching the msg sports desk afterwards i yep. mean you have to understand growing up in montreal no one cared about basketball i mean it was as irrelevant as like rugby is today in the united states if that analogy makes any sense to anyone and i would stay up at night and I would position my Walkman so I can listen to the Knicks post game show on WFAN because you couldn't get it yes. anywhere. Yeah, no, the Raptors yeah. were irrelevant. The Grizzlies were irrelevant. They were one year old at the time. Um, it was just so special to have that. So I'll go with those guys. And then yeah. in the studio, I got to go with Costas. Mm, um, okay. Know, I mean, he was the guy. Did that surprise yeah. you? Who do you think? Ernie Johnson? I think I might lean Ernie. I'd only, yeah. only be, I love Costas, right? Uh, because yeah. that, that was our beginnings. And, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you would listen to Costas like like your parents would listen to, like, you know, Ted Koppel or something, a nightline. Like, yeah, this was Walter serious Cronkite. stuff. Yeah, Walter Cronkite. This was serious stuff. What are the Knicks doing? But um, I would go Ernie only because it just seems like you're watching the game with a friend. Yeah, right? Or Ernie's right. he's just so down to he's earth, man. And he just he's had so that good. personality. I love the, 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 the banter that they have back and forth on that inside the TNT, inside the NBA on TNT. I just feel like Ernie's that guy that, like, you could sit on the couch with him and watch the game. No, you're 100%. He doesn't get talked about enough. That is the greatest studio team yes, of all time. absolutely. Yeah, of any sport, yeah. of any broadcast. And it's obviously so great because of the personalities, but if he was a guy who had an ego, who wanted to talk, who didn't distribute, who wasn't an ultimate team player with yeah. no ego, that thing doesn't work. Not it at does all. not work at all. Not he's the all. point guard, and uh, it's it's so important to have that guy, and he's so damn good at his job. And you know what's so amazing about that, um, you know that studio and, and those guys and the way they talk about the game. Again, no filter; they tell it like it is. There are times where I don't really care about the game, but I make a point to watch either the pregame or the postgame or the halftime show because I just want to hear what they're saying about the NBA. But I feel like because they've been on the air for so long and because they've been constants throughout the season during the week, they have gotten us through some tough times. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's yeah. so rare that you look towards the studio team of a sports show to help us grieve Kobe Bryant, um, you know, pandemic. True, so true. many things that happened. Like I was looking to those guys for guidance, for answers, for for some sort of comfort, right? To mourn with them. And they always hit the right notes. They hit the funny notes, they hit the sad notes, they hit the morning notes, they hit the exciting notes. Like they hit every single note every single time, yeah. always the right way. It's a very underrated skill. They don't get enough praise. I know they get a ton of praise, but like they really are the gold standard. And I don't think there's any team close. I mean, you compare that with all due respect to what we get on other networks and other sports. It's just like it's not even it's night and day. Yeah. And it shocks me that other networks don't try to recreate it. The closest thing to it is I don't know if you're a soccer fan, but uh, Champions League coverage mm-hmm. and Paramount Plus with Kate Abdo and Terry Henry mm-hmm. and um, and uh, Jamie Carragher and, and Michael Richards. Mm-hmm. That's the closest thing to it. But they're a very young team. 
but they are stealing. You could tell they are stealing the blueprint. Mm. Let them speak. Let them breathe. Talk about the good and the bad. It's great, but there will never be another inside the NBA. Yeah, I agree. And, and so uh, I'm putting Ernie as my studio host. I'll go with Marv as my play-by-play guy. I love Bree. They, they're like 1A and 1B, but only because of the origins, I, I got to go with Marv. Like, that was, you know, my yeah. heyday as a Knicks fan, 90s Knicks. It, it's Marv calling that on the NBA, on NBC as well. I would go... I love I love the czar pick. I'll go Jeff Van Gundy. It's still, yeah. still my favorite Knicks no, no. coach. Marvin Jeff is a cool duo. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a cool duo. Even I gotta I gotta find a spot for my guy Gus Johnson though, man. I'm putting him on the radio. Gus okay. Johnson, Johnny Hoops on the radio. It is very Knicks centric, but those those are my guys, man. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. I'd go with Johnny Most. I, I wish I lived in an era where I could listen to Johnny Most. I know he's a Celtics guy. Yeah, man. yeah. You know, that's amazing. Um, that that would be incredible. Yeah. Or like Vince Scully. Vince he's Scully. not really a basketball guy, but like the idea of listening to him on the radio calling anything. Yeah, yeah. Sounded and I, I was a Hubie Brown guy too, man. Oh, yeah. He I was, was a big amazing. Hubie Brown guy. Oh, still and, am. And I think he's still going to be doing it at 90 years old. Yes. Yes, wow. it's unbelievable. Shout out he's to unbelievable. you. Man. I love the way he breaks things down. He's yeah, like the yeah. eternal coach. Absolutely. It's great. 